session for over an hour or more discussing personnel issues within the borough. I know Herbie's in a hurry to leave, so I'm going to deal with him, and then I'm going to deal with the high school kids. So, Chief, okay. what do you have? Um, just a, a quick, um, the committee that's of the four fire companies have been working, a uh, meeting, uh, that meeting in January, they've been reviewing the previous surveys and uh, kind of brainstorming on what the path forward's going to be. There'll be a copy of their meeting minutes in the, with the fire chief's report this month, so you'll be able to actually see the minutes. We're in the process of closing out two FEMA grants, one for smoke alarms and one for CO alarms. Uh, one's completed. I'm working on a second one. Today, the Fer Federal Firefighters Grant opens up. Uh, that's basically for uh, equipment and, and uh, fire trucks. Uh, the fire companies have probably seen this in the paper. Uh, local fire companies are getting somewhere between twelve and fourteen thousand dollar grants from the fire commissioner. That's a Pennsylvania state grant. And then the final thing I have is that uh, been working with the contractor for the um, vehicle exhaust system with the redevelopment authority. And it looks like that contractor is a CoStar's contractor, so that will make the path a lot easier uh, moving forward. Great. Any questions for the fire chief? Uh, thanks. I know you had another meeting to be at. Okay. Uh, John is here with his teacher, Mr. Smith. I don't know who wants to go to the podium and speak, or if anybody wants to go to the podium. Whatever you guys want to do, you want to come up front? <coughs> if you come up front, you're going to have to hold this mic. I'll give you my microphone. When you talk, you have to hold the mic. Yeah, come up front.
We had a Ms. Dorothy Twist, one of our crossing guards, resigned today. She'll be uh, resigning effective uh, this Friday, um, just so you're aware of that. We have also two uh, part-time police officers that have left us for full-time employment. We're in the process of trying to replace them. Um, I know there's been some concerns about the council regarding the truck traffic in town. We're in, we work with the uh, Pennsylvania Commission on Environmental, is that it? I forget. The PCU is the acronym for it. But they've been helping us with the truck traffic. We put some information out on that, trying to address it. But we also are looking at a part-time officer that you have in front of you tonight by the name of John Allen, Allen who's a former Philadelphia Highway Patrol officer that if he meets all the requirements for our backgrounds and the other aspects of it, we'll be bringing you on to assist us in that specifically because he has the background in that. Um, other than that, um, we've been very busy recently with some juvenile issues regarding um, just pretty much juveniles being juveniles, but unfortunately it's taking up a lot of our time. Um, we've cited multiple juveniles and been bringing them to the municipal uh, magistrate. And the other issue that we've been dealing with a lot with, just to make the council aware of it, is Gardensia. Um, it's becoming a real tax of our resources because it's basically a countywide facility where we're, they're bringing these people in with these problems and a lot of the mental health issues and substance abuse issues. And there's been issues regarding um, other municipalities dropping things off kind of in our laps kind of situations. So we're going to have to be addressing what, that. What is that, Chief? I'm sorry, you said Gardensia? Yeah, so we have facility over next to um, Lower Bucks Hospital. Oh, right. So we're going to get together with them, Lower Bucks Hospital, and see if we can come up with, you know, a little something. Something's got to help. Something's got to give. Because when we go over there, it's 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 a resource. It hurts. That's all I have. Any questions for the Chief? I do, the problem you're at, this is Gavenzia, which is behind the, the, uh, the hospital. Yes, sir. What about Lenape, which used to be in there yeah. and now have their own building? Lenape really hasn't been causing us much problems. We've responded there for issues, but they seem to have a, a very nice, well run Lenape operation. Lenape is short term. Gardenzia is like 28, 30 days. Gardenzia is really not sure about the aspect of the hold, but it's just the kind of the drop off aspect of it. It seems like the process at Lenape is much more organized and much more structured and they have oversight as compared to people coming through the door, people in crisis being dropped off at Gardensia where they're really not, they're not medically cleared. A lot of times they're still under the influence and all those issues aren't being addressed properly. Okay. Well, then he is in the public, the old public health building. Yes, you're asking me about the old. Well, I mean, it's the old building. It's the older building, building back there, separated. Okay. I um, I just not familiar with the old public health building. I'm sorry. It's that one floor. It's not, you know, right. Lenape's the in the new structure. building, and the um, and the ambulatory surgery center is in the other one. But I have a it's it's the old building. Yeah. And the space that yeah. Lenape vacated, right. Gordensi is now renovating, so they're going to expand their operation and add some beds. Yep. And I think if this is a concern of what they're doing, maybe we need to approach them because they're tax exempt and they're not even paying us taxes. Chief, can you I let us a, let a couple of us know or the manager when this meeting is going to take place? Absolutely. I have a board meeting with the hospital on Friday, on Thursday. So I was going to try to talk to the uh, director over there. Yeah. So if you'd like to. Well, no, I mean, you can still talk to them, but maybe I'll oh, no, try, I'll look, try look. to talk to you tomorrow just to Absolutely. get filled in before before that meeting. Cause yeah, we're in the, I just had a supervisor's meeting, so this this was all brought to my attention. I've seen it on the radar, so I have to do my background also. So I'll have some information for you prior to your meeting. I know it used to be an issue, because sometimes they would bring people there, and they, they would just send them over to the emergency room <coughs> at the hospital, and it was causing a problem. That's that the way. battle that we have right now. So. Okay. I will. Uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Any other questions for the chief? Public participation. There's only one side of the room, so anybody on this side of the room, go to the podium and state your name and address. I'm Jacqueline Marish. I live across the street at uh, Grundy Tower. I just wanted to know, would it be on the agenda for next week, or is it not going to be on the agenda for the status update on that? site for the small cell tower that was discussed about three or four months ago and there was a time frame on it? 
We haven't heard anything from them. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anybody else on this side of the room would like to speak on anything? That ends public participation. Lorraine. Um, I just want to talk about the uh, new lights on the path. Uh, they're LED. They're supposed to last 10 years. Um, I think they've brightened uh, the path up immensely. A lot of people that walk have called me to say thank you. You know, it's not me, but um, I say, you know, thanks for calling. And uh, I think it was a great what money spent. It was money well spent because... We have a lot of walkers in town, and we have a lot of people that use the path. And um, I don't know if you've noticed it, it's bright. It's so much brighter. So um, I'm really happy about it. Thank you. That's it. Also, they trimmed all the trees, so yeah. this spring should be nice. And uh, all this is being done, uh, the entire path is being done. So, Greg. Um, on that note, you know, and this just hit me. Um, do we have any plans, do you think, in the near future, or are we going to look at in the near future maybe also the uh, the asphalt at certain pot, uh, spots of the path itself? Because I know that there will be coming a bit in disrepair at certain parts of the of the. Um, There's a lot path. of areas of the path that need to be sections taken out, the trees or. Are... So, I just wonder if there's money anywhere we could look for or look at because it's such a unique kind of, you know, furrow with a pathway through it and a lot of environmental impact as well. I don't know if there's something we can look at for that. There's money out there that we're looking into. Yeah, okay. Um, I also, so this might be a question for the mayor. I apologize. I meant to ask Chief Slack, but I got distracted. Um, I just wanted to confirm that at these meetings with the, with the fire companies, mm -hmm. that everyone is coming? Yes, all four companies met in February. Okay, good. Um, and then my last question is probably for the manager. Um, I know this is not in our purview, but the new turnpike uh, entrance, the the, um, the traffic patterns that are associated with that. It, being in this realm, I think we understand sometimes that sometimes projects look bad for a while and then they recover, but I would be lying if I told you I have any sense of what they're doing in so far as the traffic patterns and how they've just become, I mean, it has become a significant traffic nightmare for many people. And I'm just wondering if there's a way we can get some sort of update from PennDOT themselves as to what the long-term plan is. Is this the long-term plan? Um, are they going to be doing certain evaluations of what is already happening and see how bad it is? It's, it's bad. Um, and I'm just wondering if we can get a PennDOT update on that somehow. Let me make a phone call. I got somebody that's doing that project. And, and, and ter it's the Turnpike, too, besides PennDOT. Okay. So it's Turnpike Commission? Yes. Yes. Well, if we could get some... Maybe I can get somebody here Monday night. Okay. That would be great. Just, again, maybe they'll, maybe they'll ease our concerns a little bit and explain that there's a lot of different work still going on and that this will be happening and this will be happening. But Go a different way. Right now it just seems pretty pretty nightmarish, especially considering we just they just did all those upgrades that made it so much more accessible right. from the Turnpike and from New Jersey it's to get... It's the light. It's and the now second it's like, light. Oh my God. Yeah, and it's yeah. permanent looking. Yeah. All right, thank you. That's all I have. Lorraine, you want something else or no? Um, I just wanted to say that... Um, one more thing about the path. Um, I think that the guys that worked for the borough did a quick job with that as well. It was done very quickly. Um, and that's all. I'm sorry. Tony. Yeah, I have a few things. Um, I'm going to jump on with the path, too, because I, I just noticed that, and they do, they look great. I mean, somebody was just talking to me about it, and I happened to look, I'm like, it was super well lit, but it was, uh, it looked good. All right, the next thing is the baseball fields. I, I know Jeff Mano, you know, sent us all a letter about what he wanted to do with the batting cages or the, uh, you know, the hitting cages. And, you know, I went up there just to go check on it because I really don't have much of an idea about baseball. But what I did notice is that there are, because it was just raining not too long ago, there are some puddles that are there on 
the, the girls' softball, the major softball field that we used to have the uh, adult softball at, on the visitor side, behind the bleachers on the visitor side, you had these two big, you know, uh, I don't want to call them ponds, but, you know, the yeah. large puddles that need to be filled. So if we could just get some, you know, get Leo over there to put some dirt. And you also have a lot of the, I guess from the recent win, you have uh, the roofs that are on the, uh, the dugouts that are, are blown off. They're going to need to have, maybe Dave can go over there and take a look at them. But uh, they, they need some attention as well. And the other thing that really is what's concerning to me is that we talk about we wanted, wanting to save money and we want to do things, but there is so much equipment that's being left out in the weather. And <coughs> bless you. Thank you. And I, Mr. Dolan, I sent those those pictures. Were you able to get those pictures that I sent to you in an email? No, I, mean, I, I don't even think I got your email. No? Why don't you just send it? I would say probably last Tuesday maybe or Wednesday. No, I didn't get anything. All right. I, I figure you didn't because you usually, you know, get right back to me. But, you know, there's, you got the, the... I don't even know what you would call it. The, the, it's not a rake. What's that called when they go on the dirt with it, put it on the tractor? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know either. Yeah. But anyway, so that's left out in the weather. It's all rusted, bent up. So it, we're going to have to get another one of those. The door of the actual building, the metal door looks like, you know, it's dilapidated and kind of, you know, sticking out so rodents look like they can get in there. And then we have all this trash that's built up. <clears throat> along the you know the, the the building where you know where the bathrooms are held so i mean that's something that we need to get cleaned up over there i mean it doesn't seem like it would be much but also i would like to you know have mr Dillon at least talk to leo or whoever's in charge over there about getting that equipment covered up and you know or thrown in the trash if it's trash um and also at the baseball fields i know that the, the woman, uh, Jacqueline, talked about the, the cell towers. I was also wanted to bring that up about the cell towers. If that we're not hearing anything, is that because it, it's, are we supposed to respond to them or are they supposed to get back with us? They went out there and did a survey uh -huh. waiting for them to come to. Cancer. Okay. Uh, so that's what I have with the baseball field. You know, I'm going to keep, you know, talking about the growth that's along Garden Street. And I know it's beating a dead horse, but I just figure I'll keep bringing it up until people get tired of hearing it and we get something done. Now that the winter's here, it'd be easier for our borough workers to clean that up, get all that stuff out of there while it's not growing crazy, while most of the stuff's dead. And, you know, I don't know how busy they are during the winter, but I think that this would be a good time. You know, maybe for Mr. Dillon's, I don't think it's anything that we have to get a vote on, but just to get over there and clear that area up for the people along Garden Street and dealing with that for way too many years. That could be an easy fix for us. Uh, Mr. Dillon, I just got this call actually today, so I didn't really do it. I figured I'd talk about it today. The Elks Club that is at the end of Spruce Street. They just had, I don't know if they had some renovations or whatever, but they had their insurance company come out. And one of the things that the insurance company was talking about is the, the street or an alley. I don't know if it's a street or an alleyway. But behind the Elks Club, there is a, a street or alley that needs uh, some potholes to be, to be fixed in order for them, you know, to, to get a, a clean bill of health from the insurance carrier that they're trying to use even though they know it's not their road for some reason i don't know why they their insurance company needs it so i'll send you some pictures of that tomorrow so you can take a look at that lights on there also at the canal with not only the lights but there's the, the same placard that kind of recognizes the canal and has that little history of the canal that's always broken it's now, you know, it, it has been damaged again. So I don't know if we need to build something more, more sturdy, maybe made of plexiglass that we could put up there, not just the regular, you know, that, uh, 
that, that thin plexiglass, but something, you know, a little more hardy that somebody's not going to have an easy time of damaging so easily. So I'll take pictures of that, too. I think that you know what I'm talking about. In the front of the canal, Mr. Mr. Dillon? Yes. Yeah. And then nothing about that. And then I guess this is just a question because we're always, we're always looking for different ways to raise money. So... Uh, I know that we talked about this, I don't know how many, it was years ago, or, but I, I, I remember vaguely we talked about impact fees. So any new buildings or things that are going up in the borough that they are charged an impact fee that I think that was supposed to go in, you know, that would go into our rec, into our, uh, our rec fund, our recreation fund. Is that something that we do right now? Are we, are we collecting money for the, and those impact fees? Do we know? Yes. And then how much how much are we collecting? Correct me if I'm wrong. It's a thousand dollars for recreation, uh -huh. nineteen hundred and ten or something for sewer. For sewer. Yeah. For new for new year for new for new construction. Okay. For new units. All right, that's it. That's all I have. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, concerning the North Ward, uh, last month I gave uh, Mr. Dillon a list of some things, uh, potholes, um, tripping hazards on concrete, and uh, uh, someone's dumping uh, construction debris on one of our alleyways. Uh, Mr. Dillon was prompt with most of, most of these things that I did, as he always is, so maybe we can get everything done uh, in the near future. Also, two people asked me about streetlights, uh, whether I had to get a hold of a councilman to get some streetlights. I informed them that I'd be glad to do that for them. However, if you just call the borough at 785-4501, uh, talk to one of the secretaries, the borough is very prompt with that, and I'm sure it'll take care of that situation with your streetlights in front of your houses. Streetlights out, Dave. There, there was a couple of people who asked me. Uh, the easiest thing, when they call, there's a poll number on every right, call. Right. Just tell them to give the poll number, and they're usually fixed yep. uh, within yeah. 24 hours. Yes, they're very good at about it. So we need the location and the poll numbers of the telephone poles. Okay. So um, riding my bicycle around, a uh, couple TVs in the back alleyways. I don't know if people are, are, know this, but uh, as a courtesy to the taxpayers, the borough, We'll take those TVs down behind the maintenance building, okay, just to, to make arrangements when, when that's open, I think Tuesdays and, and Fridays. So just put those TVs in the back of your trunk and the borough will, will do that for you. Uh, the other thing, I, uh, I missed the budget meeting. I was on vacation. Uh, just for the record, I would have voted no for the local service tax. And reading uh, tonight's work session, um, about Mr. Harris's letter, I did take a ride on my bicycle on Sunday. I uh, looked at over the situation. I won't talk about it because it's not my ward, but if, if Mike or Betty wants to talk about that, I, I did look it over. I, I feel like uh, because I looked it over, I'll be able to talk about what he wants down there. And uh, finally, uh, I saw here discuss Emily Auto Repairs and Towing letter, uh, where, where they want to come in to the borough and tow our police department cars. Um, years ago, I talked to Jerry Lynch when he was alive, and he was not allowed to put in a bid for the township police department. They would not allow the borough guys to go into the township. So I stopped and I talked to uh, Tommy Lynch today, who took over for Jerry. I asked him if that was still in place. He goes, "Yes, we're not allowed. We're not allowed to work in the township, okay, on the, on, on on that type of contract." So it's pretty pretty plain to me. If our guys from borough can't go out to the township, we should not let the township guys come into the borough. And that's all I got. Before you came here, there was a motion passed that the only two towers in town. Or Bernard's and Lynch's. Bernard's has given that up now, so we only deal with Lynch. Okay. And good. there's nobody here that's will, willing to change it. Very good. Louis. Okay. The um, only thing I wanted to mention, we met the 
uh, President DiGiuseppe and Mr. Dillon and I met with uh, Don McCluskey and Pat Mulhern. Um, they presented some information on the uh, Friends of uh, Burlington Island. Uh, both Pat and Don. Don's our new representative for the Canal, uh, Friends of the Canal. And uh, Pat's been working with, uh, with us on the, on the Burlington Island. And uh, they're going to come, come forth with some information <clears throat> in the future on, uh, on what's going on. They've been involved in cleanups over there. And, uh, you know, and, and this group uh, is also watching the court case because the Corps of Army Engineers wanted to dump sludge on the Burlington Island. Uh, so that was, uh, we had a good meeting and, and I think it's a good organization and the borough will uh, try to support their efforts, I think, and what they're doing. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is Bucks County Community College uh, for Heart Association. They have an art show. Friday night at the Lower Bucks, uh, Lower Bucks campus, and it's I've attended it for years, and it's really a it's a nice art show. It's local artists that uh, present their stuff there, and and the uh, benefits go to the Heart Association. That's it. Thank you. Michael. Yes. Uh, just Welcome a couple. Welcome to your first meeting. Well, thank you. Uh, just a couple things that I just wanted to mention. Um, as everyone else has, the um, gotten a great response, uh, positive feedback about how wonderful the path is and how lit up it looks. So thanks to the Public Works, and they really got that done quickly. Um, the other thing to mention, and uh, Ralph had addressed it, but um, I got a couple calls about lights that were out, and it's really important to make sure that you give them the poll number. It's a very long number. Uh, they have that, they get it done really quick. You know, I was trying to explain where it was and they just said that poll number. So it's on a metal plate. It's about halfway up the pole. Um, it's very visible. So, and it's usually a combination of letters and numbers. And on a final note, um, I'm sure you've seen the uh, Bucks County sign. Um, I think that it's great. We're encouraging people to get out there to take group pictures uh, and post those. Uh, this is something that um, that we were chosen to have it put there, uh, and I think it, we're up there with the the big hitters. Uh, before here, it was at the Shady Brook Farms. Uh, before that, Peddler's Village, the Children's Museum, and it originated at um, the uh, the other borough. Uh, Quaker, uh, uh, Quaker Town Borough. So we are actually the fifth person to, uh, not fifth person, <laughs> the fifth location to have that. And uh, so I would take advantage of it. It's, it's good and it's really part of, uh, people are talking about it and it's another reason for them to come to Bucks County. So go out there with your family, your friends, your organizations and, and take a selfie. I think that's it. Thanks, Michael. Sure. Uh, Joe? Yeah, a couple things. <clears throat> yeah, I've got a few phone calls also about how great the path looks at nighttime. Um, I took the opportunity to get out there and, and look at it, and all the feedback has been very positive about it. Um, on Sunday, which was Super Bowl Sunday, the Advisory and Oversight Committee uh, finished up our Martin Luther King Day of service. I don't know if you saw on Facebook. We collected a little over 3,000 pounds of food for the various uh, pantries that we have in town. I want to thank the, uh, the Borough of Bristol, Bristol High School, Holy Ghost Prep, St. Mark, Carmen United Methodist, and Calvary Baptist. Uh, they were all the different groups that, that worked along with us. Also, two, <coughs> my wife hollers at me all the time when I say that, also, two. Working together with the, um, the Academic Oversight Committee again and the Bristol Borough School District, there's going to be a community career night on March 26, 2020, from 6.30 to 8.30. The intent is to get students, parents, anybody in the community to come out. We're going to have meet businesses, local leaders, uh, college representatives, kids. We suggest you bring resumes job opportunities possibility. There'll be a random gift card giveaway from local vendors. 
And some of our sponsors are the, uh, the Bristol Borough Business Association, the Bristol Borough Teen Foundation, the Borough of Bristol, Raising the Bar. So that'll be March 26, 2020, 630, 830, and that'll be at uh, Snyder Girardi. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Dillon if we can get this flyer put on our channel so that uh, I know March is down the road. Uh, flipping over to police, we ended up the year with a total of 13,090 calls for service in Bristol Borough. Generally, every month I like to give that, that number out. And 613 fire calls in 2019. For informational items, as Mr. DiGiuseppe said, and I believe uh, Councilman Gerard, Way back in the early 2000s, we were having some troubles with the, uh, the tow trucks, and a lot of the township companies wanted to come in, and there was an ordinance passed that said only Bristol Borough, and as Mr. DiGiuseppe indicated, um, Lynch right now is the only one that we have. I don't know, I haven't heard anything from the chief or anything relative that we're having any problems in getting tow trucks, so I don't think we need to change anything. And other than that is uh, next Monday, uh, would appreciate council's vote for the uh, part-time police officer that we'd like to hire. We're not Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm going to run. <coughs> excuse me. Down this agenda. So, number two is to authorize advertisement of an ordinance to install a stop, stop sign at West Railroad Avenue and Old Route 13, as per Gilmore's letter. So, as everyone knows, uh, Betty worked on trying to get that road paved and ended up getting money through uh, the county, community the community development money, and it's a little fast now, so it defines the road. So when you're coming down West Railroad Avenue and you're facing Old Route 13, there will be a stop sign there to stop you, so you just don't exit on the Old 13. I also think there should be one going the other way, so when you go out to Otter Street, mm -hmm. So you could stop there also. So I'm recommending we add to this ordinance. I don't know if that's possible, Kurt or Amanda, that we put that in since it's a two-way. Amanda? We can, we can certainly check with our traffic engineer. I know he did the evaluation. Um, part, of the, part of his analysis is based on the traffic volumes on Old Route 13 and then on Otter, as you were you were talking about. Um, I think the volumes are a little bit higher, actually, on Old Route 13 than they are on Otter Street. Mm -hmm. um, so he felt that it might not be warranted at this point, but we can certainly go back and, and I'm check. I'm just it. saying, I mean, if you got sidewalk there for, for right. anything, even for kids going by on a bicycle, or at least you're the, you have to stop. Right. Yeah, we can we can take a look at that and we'll. If you can look at that and make that part of our, uh, if you can look at it this week. Yeah, if council wants to conditionally approve it too, we can you know condition it upon right. the. Right. We can just the amend that motion to include both of them. Okay. To advertise, and if we can't do it, then we just don't adopt it. But at least we've advertised it. Okay. okay. But right. Amanda, could you look? I don't think there's any other street entering on the Otter that doesn't have a stop sign. Yeah, you so might be right. This might be, yeah, the only, we'll look at it. this might be the only one. So. Yeah. Okay, I can so check Does that. anybody have any questions on that, Mr. Devine? Yeah, I just have a question. This is a kind of a general question. What is the cost to the borough every time that we want to, you know, do a, a traffic study or whatever to, to put stop signs in? I have no idea. You have a ballpark? I don't know. Would you use? For something like this, it'll be a few hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it depends on the, the nature of the request, and you know, in this case, we were able to find traffic counts from databases that you know other outside agencies gather. Okay. But if we have to go out and perform the traffic counts, that's you know, obviously and then the price goes up significantly. Okay. Yep. All right. Thanks. Uh, you should be aware too that the statute, the law provides that we cannot uh, direct a stop sign without the recommendation from the engineer. We just can't do that. You just can't put one up. Right. All right. The other thing is the, the street sweeper. As everyone knows, last year, the street sweeper was down constant. We had constant problems with it. So 
we're in the process of looking at purchasing a new street sweeper. What are we at, about 300 and some thousand? Oh, 310. $310,000, which that money will come out of the uh, refuse, the trash and the refuse. So for now, to repair this street sweeper is $18,000. So let's think about this. You have a machine that's worth $300,000 new. It already outperformed more than five years longer than it's supposed to. So I think it's worth it to fix this street sweeper because even if you order a new one, it's going to take six to seven months, maybe eight months to get one. So we're probably already missed this season. So it's something we could talk about going towards the fall to order the street sweeper for next spring. Uh, but if it's fixed, you also can keep it as a backup or you could sell it eventually. I would recommend we just keep it as a backup. So the money's coming out of our trash, and uh, so I'm going to make that an agenda and be voted on for a Monday night. Any questions on that, Mr. Devine? Yeah. Um, I mean, just moving forward, I agree that you know it would probably make sense to to probably get the new street sweeper, but you know the timing of it. Getting it fixed for eighteen thousand dollars or whatever the cost is going to be, are we going to have any guarantees that this is, you know, going to take care of the problem and we're not going to also miss a bunch of days this year no. for the street sweeper? Well, they're going to—it's like a car. You bring your car in, you need a new transmission, you need brakes. They're going to fix everything that it needs. <clears throat> but two weeks from now, the motor goes. That's anything they fix. There will be warranties. Okay, on. that's what, that was what I was. And it's through the, the CoStar bid, so we're not. This isn't going out to. This company is where we bought the sweeper. Okay, so, so how long? How much? How much money does the sweeper bring in during the season? During the street sweeper season? I don't have that number in front of me, but I can get it. We can get you that number with no problem. Okay. And how many tickets were issued, uh, Chief? We have all that. Yeah. Okay. I just want to get that over. I just want to make sure it makes sense for us. If we're going to wait to, you know, to buy the three hundred thousand dollar model, you know, does it make sense just not to have anything done? So you would go all year with the streets the way they look right now. I would go. I mean, it's not all year. You go for the season. What is the season where the street sweepers on the road? Well, to Thanksgiving. Yeah, I would go April to Thanksgiving without, depending on what the numbers are. Absolutely. I'm saying leave the streets the way they look right now with all the trash on them. Well, I mean, you could uh, ask people to clean their own stuff up. So right. go into their, you know. Back, we'll take that into consideration. Yeah. Anything else? No, that's it. All right, number four. Restrict parking on Otto Street is per Harris Fuel's letter. So what they're saying is that, you know, they're trying to run a business too. And, you know, they're asking for a relief for people that are parked in front of their business all day long and they can't get customers in to pay their bills. So uh, today Michael went out and he uh, surveyed that area. I don't know if you want to speak on it, Michael, and, and all the other spots that you looked at. Or you yeah. want me to well, you want to finish and then I can. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, I think that it, what we have to look at here is that we're not raising the question of uh, because it's a business they're getting um, parking available. This is a place where people like the bank that's on Radcliffe Street, the banks, many banks on Radcliffe Street that have this. Uh, the bank that has it on Mill Street. This is a service um, for people. It allows people to get in and get out, to go in to pay their bills. Um, and I think that it is something. It is a service business. I, I think that it's something that needs to be, I believe at some point it was there. Uh, and I think that it's something that now they're, they're going to control of when it will be utilized for temporary or short-term parking, which will be the hours of operation. Uh, but after that, there. Um, so I just think, you know, being part of uh, this is a perfect example of how 
what I'm trying to do is we'll go into other neighborhoods. It's, I think it's a way of the, the neighbors and the businesses coming together on a joint venture, and it's something that's needed. And I would be happy to address anything with anyone, but I think it's something that's needed because I know many people that go there to pay their bills on a monthly, weekly, whatever it may be. It's not like they're going in there to go shopping. So that's just my um, is it going to be like a 10 minute? Like, you know how uh, Mill Street Pharmacy has? 30 minutes. 30 minutes. It's 30 minutes, but it'll go from the hours of operation of. Uh, so a person will be able to stay there for 30 minutes? Correct. Only during hours of operation, and then people can park there at night? Yes, before and after. Okay. They can stay there as long as they would like. Okay. Tony? Yeah, I, I mean, to me, all these things always sound like good ideas, but the reality of it is you have a business that will be taking parking from <laughs> from residents on the street who already have parking issues. Yeah, well, so I'm just saying, and the other thing about it is, I mean, moving forward is we're going to have to, to me, it's just about being fair. So you have all these other businesses that are having parking issues. Are, they, are we setting a precedent that we're going to allow all businesses that are, you know, in residential areas, which all of them are in Bristol Borough, to allow them to have the same opportunity to have that parking during working hours. I, I think that you need to view every business on a case-by-case -case issue. And this isn't something that isn't done in town. There's two-hour parking for businesses in Harriman. There's 10-minute drop-off areas. There's uh, half-hour parking in, in er other areas. So it's just not on Otter Street. And I think the residents, if you leave for work and you come home from work, you're talking two parking places. That's all that goes in front of that, that store. So and if there's somebody that you know or anybody at home that's watching mm -hmm. that has a business that thinks that they should come in here and discuss this or meet with council. I have no problem. But don't forget, on Garden Street, the entire street has no parking for anybody that goes to the train station. They get ticketed. So, you know, it's not something that we never created. They would have got half hour parking or hour parking. So, I don't see anything wrong with it. Michael, I'm I sorry to interrupt in you. Off, Tony, what you had mentioned, that just keep in, in, to, in mind that it's it's going to be during the hours that not all, but the majority of people are at work. Right, but it, it, the situation, and specifically from what I you know what I see, what I understand is they have parking in the back, right? They have parking for that business in the back, it, and they all yeah. This is for people like. Right, I understand, but there's in. parking there in the back. And there's also parking on the side. I think that is reserved for the, you know, I guess the president or whoever runs the, the company. So, like, to, yeah, well, to me, I look at it in the sense of my, my goal is the residents, and that's not my ward, but I would be mm -hmm. in the same. I'm just looking at it in general because it could go across all wards. So, are we setting the precedent? Like, to me, I would look at it this way. If. <coughs> If the, if the president of the company, whoever owns the business, has a spot, why don't you do that? Why don't you let those spots that you have reserved for yourself, allow those to be reserved for your customers? So that way the members, the residents of the street or in the surrounding area don't limit their parking. But you where do you mean? want them to put their cars? Oh, yeah, in the back. There is no room back there. There's plenty. There's always room you could park. I mean, All right, so basically, instead of debating this thing uh, for two right. hours, Dave, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, like I said, I went down here Sunday. I, I did, uh, didn't want to step on anybody's toes, but there, there was a resident that lived very close to there. I said, hey, uh, what do you think about 30-minute 30, 30 parking here? That stinks. My girlfriend parked there all the time. So then I went around back. There, there's, of course, you got the new road. It's very nice. Uh, there's parking for 12 to 15 cars behind it, and f when you park behind Harris Fuels, there's there's a big open driveway within 50 feet of the front door, and there's a nice sidewalk on this side within 50 feet. Which you know you park in the back, you use the new road. It's it's not a big handicap to go into the back. Also, 
down the street, Harris Fuels has a, a warehouse. I'm talking about Otter Street. They have two overhead doors and they have two driveways. So they're already taking up two public spots on Otter Street where people can't park. Behind that factory, there's parking for seven more cars plus a big truck terminal for box cars and possibly even, even a, a semi-trailer. Semi so, um, if he runs it to me, if he runs his business from the back, he's got plenty of parking. All right. But I told that girl, I said, well, we're having a meeting Monday night. Make sure you get over here. And of course, <laughs> they didn't show up. So I don't know how concerned she was yeah. about it. And I guess the other part, too, it's, it's not, I know you, you believe that it's on an individual basis, you know, a business by business basis. And to me, all that does is just opens up for selective enforcement because if you're going to open it up for everybody and everyone's on the same, you know, same playing field, and that's just what it's going to be, that's the precedent that we're sending. So I, I just think that any business should be able to have the same opportunity as Harris Fuels or anybody else that's going to be given that, you know, that's that special parking permission. I agree. All right. Well, I mean, that's a different case. I mean, I don't think it should be on a. You know, uh, case, are we going to go tomorrow and put a sign in front of every business? No, but that, the point well, is that if somebody comes here and said, let's say somebody in your ward comes here, mm -hmm. they have a business, they would like a half hour drop off. Mm -hmm. They open a daycare. Okay. Why would we deny them? Because it has nothing to do with why would we. It gives you the ability to, to determine whether it's going to happen or not. If it's just a broad statement that if you want to have this type of parking in your business, you're allowed to have it. I don't like the idea of anybody say that. Some, I'm sorry, what'd you say, Mayor? I said I don't think anybody said that. Oh, I'm sorry. I Let thought me, we were supposed so to Tony, ask questions. I was, to I jump was talking in. to myself. No, I know, but right, I I'm a little guys, no, you Tony, you got the floor. All right, thank you. Um, so to me, it's just the idea of we make a blanket statement. It's for everybody. It can't just be for individuals to make it on a a business by business basis because then you, then you're 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 talking about uh, you know selective enforcement if something comes up that maybe you know you may not agree with and you have the ability to influence you know the majority of council then it's going to be up to you and not to you know not to the entire majority of council that's the only you know I, the only concern that I have about you know, allowing it for one business. All right. Thanks for your comments. <laughs> Mr. Catrucci. I would just like to say these these guys are my competitors, but I've no I, I don't know of anyone else in town who's been more conscious of, conscious of our community or even Otter Street. And they've been there for over over sixty some years. And they're not asking for no parking. They're not asking them to make this a loading zone, which we've given to other businesses in town. They're just asking to hit the 30 minute limit and only during the day. So I don't think it's, it's a, a problem. I, I spent a lot of time there working on a house across the street and people would, you know, there's parking on Swain Street and, and, and Locust Street, but people would rather park on Otter Street. So, um, it's not that people can't park in that community. It's not that you're going to force them down somewhere else. I just think they've, they've thought this thing out. And I think it used to be that limited <coughs> parking before. But I think as a, as a as an established business, and we do it for the banks, why do we always do stuff, you know? We're not setting pre precedents for them. So I would, I would hope that the borough would uh, so all we're doing this. right now is authorizing uh, this to be put on the agenda to advertise for an ordinance. Okay? Number five, increase the solicitor service fees for zoning hearing board to 125. That'll be put on the agenda for everybody to vote on. Number six. And there are Mr. President, a uh, um, couple questions for Mr. Salerno. Uh, uh, Mr. Slono, uh, 
having working in other townships, uh, is that is that the going rate for uh, zoning solicitors? Um, what what does, do you yeah, know I what Tully Town pays? Or? I think it's reasonable. I don't know what Tully Town pays, but I think it's reasonable after. I guess she's been solicitor for 12, 13 years. For her to ask to go from 125 to 150 is very reasonable. How many hours do you think that would, would be? Uh, I think her. I think it was her last year. She charged like 12,000. We're not talking about a lot of money. Okay. It's like 12 or 15,000. And the other so, question: Does does she have a, Is that a special talent, or or can the the average lawyer do that job? Well, you want is somebody that she has special skills. You want somebody that has experience with zoning. Okay. So, but but like say we brought another uh, solicitor, in, could they handle that job? Yeah, anybody if they have zoning experience. Anybody, I mean, they have. The and if you want to put somebody's name up, Dave, that's fine. Uh, no, I, I have no way. I just ask some questions. Okay. And uh, okay, thank you. That's it. Number six. Uh, Change the one-way direction portion of Adam Street. Now, is that going to be an agenda item also? Yeah, this has been advertised, so so the actual yes. ordinance will be on the agenda for next Monday. Monday. You know what? That's misleading. We're not changing the one-way direction. We're just shortening the one-way portion. We're not changing the direction. So it'll be in our package for Monday night. The only agenda, and Bill can give me the exact. Yeah, I think the ordinance is already in the packet. So what is? Isn't it two-way? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's no, two it's two no, it's going five-way. Right, right, right. It's one way now. It's going oh. to be partially two-way. Oh yeah, yeah. Partially, partially two-way. Partially and then the last one is the hiring of John Allen as a part-time police officer, which will be part of our agenda item for. Anybody else have anything else they want to get on the agenda for Monday? Yes. Um, no, but I want to make a motion to suspend the rules so we can make Okay, the so this is part of our executive session that council discussed. So <laughs> Mrs. Collin made a motion to suspend the rules to add something to the agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. So we'd like to, uh, I'd like to make a motion to authorize our labor attorney to submit an offer to resolve a claim by a former police officer as discussed in executive session. Second. Second by Ms. Collin. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Can I get a motion to I'd adjourn like to by the ring? Second by adjourn. Mr. Adjourn. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you.